Greetings, my name is Pastor Tim, as you might have known, but if not, my name is Pastor Tim, Tim Golden. I'm here at the Deer Lakes Community Church of the Nazarene as their lead pastor, and we have been reading from the book of Luke, and we are excited to continue to do that throughout this Advent season. So let's read the word of the Lord together. We're going to be in Luke chapter 13 today, as it is the 13th day of December. Father, bless us as we read of your word. May we be instruments of your grace and your hope and your love and your joy. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 13. About this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all of the other people from Galilee? Jesus asked. Is that why they suffered? Not at all. And you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And what about the 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Were they worse sinners in Jerusalem? No. I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it but he was always disappointed. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited for three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. The gardener answered, Sir, give it one more chance. Leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you cut it down. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent doubled for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, she called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand up straight. How she praised God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, you hypocrites, each of you works on the Sabbath day. Don't you untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and lead it out for water? This dear woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released on the Sabbath? This, shame, this shamed his enemies. But all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he had did. Then Jesus said this, What is the kingdom of God like? How can I illustrate it? It's like a tiny mustard seed that a man planted in a garden. It grows and becomes a tree, and the birds make nests in its branches. He also asked, What else is the kingdom of God like? It is like the yeast a woman used in making bread, even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching, and as he went, always pressing towards Jerusalem, someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He replied, Work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom, for many will try to enter but will fail. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. 
But he will reply, I don't know you or where you've come from. Then you will say, but we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you're from. Get away from me and all the evil that you do. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For you will see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you will be thrown out. And people will come from all over the world, from the east and west, from the north and the south, and take their places in the kingdom of God. And note this, some who seem least important will now be the greatest then. And some who are the greatest will be the least of importance then. At that time, some Pharisees said to him, Get away from here if you want to live. Harold wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day I must proceed on my way, for it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks underneath her wing, but you wouldn't let me. And now look, your house is abandoned and you will never see me again unless you say, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. May you be blessed today. May you find rejoicing in the reading of God's word. You are loved. We'll see you soon. Bye now.